Okay, let's call it back to order. Obviously, Texas off, takes up a large part of that 18,000 square feet. And the remaining areas that you have, the size of those are, different, are, are I guess, probably challenging for staff to have a meaningful size uh, programming activity within those rooms. So uh, uh, perhaps the utilization of that is not as, is not as good as it could be if they were a little bit larger size. And there are reasons why things are built in certain sizes, but as a consultant today, I'm just kind of telling you what my impression are for the trends in the industry are. Those rooms are probably a little bit undersized to really fully function for a lot of people. Uh, and there, therefore, I think probably the utilization you have with that center is probably not as great as you could. Uh, proximity to the road also, if you, I'm sure all of you out there can buy, it's really kind of really kind of hits back off the road a little bit in terms of where it is, so it doesn't have a real high presence uh, for people going by by the center itself. A, gr uh, a great center in terms of, you know, what it is. Uh, uh, Herring Center, uh, y'all probably all have been to that at some point in time in your, in your life. Uh, you have two gymnasiums for racquetball courts. Uh, it was built in 83, and in addition, I guess, was done in 88. So that doesn't seem that long ago to me in my age, but when you start thinking about it, that's a few years ago. Um, uh, it has a racquetball courts, uh, fitness room, uh, classrooms, game room, vending concessions. Uh, the center is extremely well maintained. Now, I would say that on all the facilities you got, uh, I don't know, I guess maybe Bob and his people are responsible, but you're doing a great job of maintaining the facilities you got. You really are. Uh, this center itself, if you, if you think about some of the programs that you had in 88, where we all were in our life in 88, the programs are offering in 2012. Uh, centers change. Centers needs change. Uh, uh, 
space allocation, program change, who heard of Pilates, who heard of Zumba, who heard of all these things that we're doing in our centers today. And that's true as you go forward as well. So this center probably has some things that, could, that you could improve the, improve the use of it. One is expanded cardio area. There's, there's so much interest. You saw the you saw the chart of the interest of, in, in this exercise and wellness aspect of it. So you know this center could probably be modified to expand that area. The staff area here is really, really limited. And again, it's probably a product of when it was designed. But right now you have the director of the center extremely tight supporters. How you monitor people coming into that center, the 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 uh, control point, it, you have to walk a long way into the center before you actually see a person. Just there's some things and none of this is meant to be critical. It's just it's just kind of a proactive uh, rejuvenation kind of piece that you could do to that center. Uh, the, the restroom and shower areas, uh, a lot of those have some ADA and capacity issues probably right now that uh, could be done. So those are some things that we see on that center that probably could enhance that use of that facility. Uh, the Senior Activity Center uh, is 10,000 square feet. Uh, you know, heavily used center. I'm sure you all have all this is a center as well. And you've got a kitchen, a game room, uh, classroom, that's uh, a library reading area that's kind of to the end, uh, and a large multi-purpose room, which is, you know, really, really well used. Uh, chairs taken up and down, partition taken across, it's really well used for so uh, And it's so well used to the point that you kind of grow it. And that's what happens you talk about parking, you know. <laughs> you know and, and you are getting some aging population, but what's happening is is that programs that are being offered there are probably right on target with an expanded age group. And I could talk all morning about the senior. What do we do with seniors? Seniors are, let's say, 55 to 90 now. I mean, we're talking two generations, you know, maybe three generations almost. So uh, I'll talk just, let me talk just a second about seniors. What's happening in the industry is is, is seniors. Um, it's not the uh, it's not necessarily the age, but it's the physical capabilities of people that kind of separate uh, maybe uses we're going to see in the future. Because we have we have uh, you know people 75 years old that are going to recreation centers and, and working out and walking on elevated tracks and doing all that stuff especially the water piece of it. The water, the indoor water piece is probably why it's well supported because seniors like it too. Because you know that we found that that's a great activity for seniors to do and they can exercise and be somewhat buoyant. It's, it's easy on the joints, the rehab side of the equation, the medical side of the equation of indoor aquatics is great as well. And then the play aspect of indoor aquatics. So that's why you're getting a lot of support for indoor aquatics. But the senior component is one that some people are creating zones within a recreation center that would encourage seniors that are really young seniors to move into those areas. And I'm one of those young seniors uh, to move into those centers. And then the senior center is probably for, for, uh, for maybe a little bit older senior population, even though somebody is 55 probably can go to that senior and 55 or 50. 50, 50, 50, uh, and going to the centers. But, uh, so, <laughs> he got a lot of browns so, around here. Uh, I got a decade got a lot, to go. We've got a lot of members here. Uh, but, uh, I, get to the table here. I, think you, I think you get the gist of what I'm saying. You know, uh, there was a study done that, that uh, the people at 65 thought they were actually 13 years younger. I mean, this was a study that was done by the National Aging Society. And, and that's what's happening today with the seniors, you know, that need to be ratcheted up. So bottom line, this is a huge population. And what do we do? And, you know, your, your, your senior activity center is a product of its, of its own success. And, that, and the product is, is that you're, you're overcrowded there. Uh, you know, 
they need an exercise gym space. There's one they can go to next door, but uh, you know it's, it's not a real large area. They definitely have a big need for classrooms, an expanded kitchen area. The kitchen area is extremely well used and it's pretty typical uh, in senior centers. So that's kind of where it is. It's not a negative story, it's a positive story. It's so well used and so well uh, managed that we are growing. Uh, the public meeting facilities, uh, uh, we looked at two, one the Hendrick House and the other the Savage Community Room. Uh, the Hendrick House is a, is a great little jewel of amenity for you, I think. As an architect, I appreciate it, I'm sure you all do too. You know, it's just a unique venue, and, and I understand it stays put really, really well put. So, he just needs a little help in terms of maybe bringing some things into it to help it a little bit. Maybe uh, maybe enhance uh, the wedding area that you have in the back a little bit and refresh that some. Uh, you know, the kitchen probably could be updated a little bit to help it uh, be more responsive to some catering things that are occurring within that center. Uh, but uh, I think the way you're maintaining it and Purity of it and all that is great. Uh, so it just needs a little help, and we just got a little money in there to help help uh, create a few of those changes there to make that a better use. Uh, the are, set, are there any ADD? Excuse me? Any ADD issues there? Uh, what, what do you mean? Which one? ADD. I think some of them actually have been addressed. I mean, uh, we're okay at the, at yeah. the Henry Yeah. Uh, so this is a little more address over. It's well, uh, yeah, but it's stated. And I know there were issues. We had a parking lot issue that we just fixed. Okay, great. We just fixed it. Yeah. Uh, the Savage Community Room, uh, you know, it's got a serving kitchen, a large hall. Uh, if, uh, you know, if you wanted to, uh, and y'all probably know more about the, the use of this and me coming and looking at it, but. It's self-contained within the building itself. And if you could somehow not make it self-contained so you could use it other hours and, and dedicated use for that and maybe the toilets aren't shared. I mean, you know, if you're having a meeting, you can go into the toilet facility instead of going down the hall and sharing the toilets with the library and stuff like that. A few things like that that you could do to improve uh, perhaps uh, the uh, desire for people to use it in terms of right now it's, it's in uh, uh, so that's kind of my take on it we can't put windows in it if we could put windows in it that'd be great but we can't windows help kind of long meetings like this I'm talking about dedicated toilets let's say there's some of the meetings that you could be having might be evening meetings or so. So uh, it would not only serve the 85, but it would also serve the evening meetings so that uh, you created a kind of standalone piece instead of it's a part of it's a part of that center that you've got there now. Isn't what that, what that happen, Bob, because the rest of the building shuts down. What we have and and been a while since Wayne's been over there. Uh, since, since we started this process back in 09. Okay. Um, but we have to open up the uh, lobby area to access the community room. I think what he what he's really trying to address is for after hours if we could check a key out to somebody that just had access to come into that space only without opening up the lobby area, which we have issues from time to time with other people having access coming through the lobby or hanging out in the lobby without staff there to monitor it and the people that rent the room they don't monitor it because they're in the in the community room. If it had its own outside entrance. I don't know how we would address the restroom issue but as far as having its own entrance would be great. the lobby area somehow that's a that's a possibility. I'm I'm just addressing that Sorry, I didn't articulate it as well as you did, Bob. But 
that's really what I'm talking about is you could get more use out of it if you could if you could do some of those improvements to make it accessible in the evening, which would mean you probably want you know, some dedicated toilets for that. So you just you're self contained with that zone. Wait a second. Isn't the uh, where the restaurants are, you know, they got that open the waiting room, aren't all those doors locked anyway? Well they get into the big lobby area when it's running out after hours and we have a lot of people coming in and out and and I think that's the, the thought behind this is there's there's not staff or anybody there to monitor after hours what happens there in the lobby or the rest of the building if the door has to be open. And and if somebody leaves early, the the doors are programmed on the system to the time that the party says they're gonna be there. So if they say they're gonna be there from, from six to eleven o'clock at night but yet they don't come in till 7 and they leave at 9. Those doors are still open from 6 to 11 coming into the lobby with, without staff or anybody there to monitor it. So the, the thought behind this is if there was a way to have its own separate entrance, we could have a key checked out just like we do the head accounts where people are responsible for the entire facility while they're there. Um, it's a wish list. It may not be possible to do that. Well, I mean, I don't have a problem with it. I was just kind of wondering what the issues were. Have you had any problems? We have problems. People leave early and other people come in from time to time. We have, um, it, it's not every day, no. Um, I was just wondering. But, but from time to time. Or we have problems where those restrooms are, so they can go into the lobby. Or we, or we have a different uh, access control. People coming into the state of the not, not that I'm aware with with that, but there's a lapse in the there's a lapse in the security when somebody is totally in the room. They're not watching the lobby, or if they leave early and it's still open, and, and there's kind of a lapse. That and there are. I like the idea of more security. We just wondering. This this will keep you from having an issue, probably. Uh, and again, the spirit of this is just to say. How can you be better utilize what you've got for one? Because uh, you, you are well, I just think. One, one more comment on that. The reason I said maybe partition the lobby, you know, a second partition the lobby for access to other areas, there's also an issue about noise created in that room, you know, with uh, events. I know I've run into that. And I put together stuff that's used at community room and say, well, you, you know, you can't have noise above a certain level, or you have noise. You know, can't have noise after a certain time, so forth. And every house, I mean, you get the same problem, but it's a different issue. It's a residential area. But there, if there were a, an additional partition in the lobby that would help block that sound, then that would make it a little more compatible for some of the events that people want to hold in that space and give you the security and give them access to the restrooms without, you know, taking away, uh, without having to do anything else with the restroom. I just think that's the obvious solution. Okay. Uh, the, the aquatic facilities, uh, those are all great ideas. Uh, in the of time, kind of go through this and maybe come back. Uh, two uh, facilities you have are Sun Valley and Old Town Aquatic Center. Uh, Sun Valley uh, opened in 2005. Uh, you, know, you have the competition for 25 yard leisure amenities. Uh, you actually have kind of a, a spray on the here, Lazy River. Uh, the things we're saying that could be uh, improved here is, uh, is uh, increase some of the shape structures that you have uh, on the deck. It's, it's a large, you have some kind of large open areas, and this, this area right here is a, just a really large zone. Uh, you know, create a concession area that would allow people to stay there. It wouldn't be a big expense to allow people to stay there a little bit longer. It makes it more attractive for people to use a park a little bit longer, shade structures as well. Uh, you could do some additional spray elements as part of this very inexpensively to increase the capacity of the park. But those are some of the observations that we would have in terms of kind of minimal, not, not trying to redo, but just how do you add to it. And uh, uh, we have kind of the same comments here, except on the old town, it's obviously a smaller center. It was a redo. Uh, of the kind of area you had before. Um, uh, the observation we have here is shade structures again. Uh, we've got a lot of water parks uh, and you can't build enough shade
fish structures today because the people really seek those out. Uh, our filter room, uh, small things, filter room needs to be secured. Uh, uh, storage area for off-season storage. You know, all, your, all those things where you store. We just, right now, the staff is just really challenged to be able to store those. Uh, if you want to add some amenities, uh, perhaps uh, a 25-yard lap pool, one that's kind of open water. You could swim laps, but it could be open water. Uh, maybe you have an additional amenity like a current channel or something. A current channel where you can walk against the water for water walking for seniors in the morning, that type of thing. Just play on the, when the park is open for everybody in the evening, afternoon. Uh, those are just some things that uh, could be done to improve the capacity and use of the park. This is a summary of what you've got. Uh, and you know, it's here the, the thing that's most recent is seven years and seven years in the, in the building is older than this, but I guess it was renovated by the use nine years ago. Uh, but you, know, you see Fred Herring is close to 29 years old. We don't realize that but until we start looking at it that way. So there's a reason for some of those things. The reason for some of those things needing to occur, and even what surprised me in the senior activity center is 15 years old. I was looking at that and saying, wow, just looking at it, you wouldn't think that. Uh, but it's, it is a reality of, of what's going on, and of course, this was growing. Uh, so, I go back to general impressions. Maintenance facility is excellent. Uh, aquatics would uh, benefit from additional shade and, and, and tend to increase that use. Public meeting spaces appear to be a great benefit. There's just a few things that we're saying might be done to improve that. Uh, and what we did, we benchmarked Louisville against uh, other cities in the metroplex because we assumed that the quality of life you're trying to provide and the, and the competitive advantage of having quality of life is something you would like to know what other cities around you are doing. And NRPA has the standard, but it's somewhat outdated and it's not really appropriate. So we started benchmarking what other people have. Uh, still to quantified in terms of building square foot per capita. So you can see the numbers are pretty small, like point one or things like that. But it's building square foot per capita. That's how we looked at it. And we looked at the Louisville population at that cog number of 11,000 people. Uh, this shows uh, this shows where Louisville is right now in terms of recreation. The red line is the average. Uh, so you can see, uh, just very quickly, graphically wise, uh, Louisville, I forget the exact number, I think it's maybe 0 0.57. The average is about one uh, for what's going on within this market area. So you can see uh, you're about probably 40% lower than probably communities are around you in terms of recreation center capacity. It's capacity. That's a kind of quick snapshot. <clears throat> Senior centers, uh, you know, on the surface, it looks like you have a, a, a great facility, and you do. Uh, but, in, but in terms of in terms of where we are, average-wise, to other cities, now, granted, we can throw we can throw some of these out that are that are pretty high, but still, overall, you see there's a lot of dots above Louisville right now in terms of capacity. And that stands to reason you're 111,000, will be 111,000 people. But that kind of gives you a snapshot of, of where we're at. So, uh, with that information, that oh, information, go ahead. Can you go back one? Okay. The blue dots are their current population or are they their projected COD population? No, that's, that's, that's the centers they're providing right now based on their. On their current. So that green, so this is actually two data points. One is their current with their current square footage. The green is our current square footage with our projected population. Oh, yeah, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, right, some, some of these cities are kind of, some of these cities are, are like Plano, it's just about built out. Yeah. So there are some cities that are kind of on that, on that end. And there are some cities uh, that actually, uh, uh, what's, what's going on is they're actually they're actually building facilities to, to respond 
can I jump in real quick? I think y'all might have misunderstood each other. The greens is Louisville's current acre. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, current cost. Yeah. Green is with yeah. current. With okay. current. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's it's this is just an extrapolation. I was looking, I was looking at this yeah. down here when you, when you asked that question. That's what it does. Yeah, thank you. The green is 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 your po current population and our current square footage is your square footage. The blue dots are their current square footage and their current population. That's correct. Why do I have 111,168 on this slide or any of these slides? This, this right here. You mean? Yep. It's because if you're building something, let's say you're, you're building something, you know, it takes probably at least three years to build something. Starting to edge up for your 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 population. Uh, your current population is what ninety. He's using that TJ for a target. Yeah. yeah. Assuming your future population, what would you have to have in terms of square footage to meet the average that's shown there on the red so, line? So, but but this chart doesn't show me that. This chart just says what I have today, and it says, oh, by the way, you're going to grow. It calculates an average for the other cities, and then it applies that average to your future. Population, right? That is what you're doing, right? That yeah, is correct. So it's basically saying, based on today's average, if you had tomorrow's total population, this yeah. is how much space you need. Because we derived that this is the average right now that the cities are doing with their current population. Okay. They're 0.27. Right. We multiply times 2.7 by where your population will be. And just give, I'm not saying that you had to build 30,000. Okay, I'm so the only data point, the only data point that that is relevant to is nothing in the chart. It's relevant to we've got a projected 30,000 square foot deficit. deficit. No, you're not, you're not 30,000 deficit. That's what you would have if you were if you were to come up to this average. Which is today's average. To build up population. Okay. This is great. Why don't we kind of move on and that's, that's, that's fine. Right. Okay. Okay. Get with them and get it straight so with that in mind, and it's like your current how do, we, how do we use what you currently have to, to get to that point? Uh, well, we're one of the options. This is one option, and that's fine. This is kind of a talking point. One option is, uh, you know, red herring here is to come in and renovate that interior space like we talked about, make it a little more uh, program responsive to today's needs. So that would keep us 30,000 square feet in this column. Senior Activity Center, one of the things we could do is actually convert the recreation, combine the recreation and senior center by connector with that have classrooms off of it. So you're you're fully utilizing those two buildings to get to your to get to your kind of target zone of, of uh, senior. And they have the same activities that you kind of need. You got the big gym that could be converted to purpose. You got the you got the uh, cardio center that could be converted to classrooms. So it's kind of a normal transition. Use a lot of times you'll see those in centers of what you've got there now. And then over here, in terms of reaching your capacity, create a new uh, uh, center with an indoor aquatic. So it's indoor aquatic, which your highest level. Highest level of D. Yes, sir. Good question. If I'm combining these two centers and I'm adding 4,000 square feet connector, where did I lose 10,000 square feet? Is it because you're showing the two added together in that column? Is that the two, it? The two added together is 28,000, then 4,000 connector equals 32. Okay, so on the left hand side I add them back. Okay. Yeah. I get it. So anyway, it's, it's something, something for thought since this facility is like uh, we're saying for the full utilization of it, that, that center would need to grow quite a bit, I think, to serve needs for a full recreation center. And the, the senior center needs to grow. So one option is just let's, let's use the amenities that we have there, let's build a connector and do some minor modifications to the inside of that if we have a new and large senior center with the same location. So that was kind of the thought process. So big picture, expand the senior center, modify some rooms in the herring center, uh, modify its use, uh, build a, a 
do a recreation flight center. Explore opportunities uh, in the indoor pool uh, with perhaps some partners. Uh, you know, YMCA, uh, school district, maybe even the hospital might be a potential uh, partner in some of that. This case gives you an outline of what would be kind of what I see as kind of a chassis for a for a recreation center. Uh, it's basically your basic lobby, administrative area for a small but your fitness area would probably be about 7,000 feet. I'm just giving you a sense of what this would include in that kind of square footage. Uh, would be in that area. The gymnasium, it's a double gym, it's not two gyms, it's a double gym that could be divided with a purpose. So it's a little bit larger than a standard gym, but uh, it allows you that. And, and when you do that, it allows you to have a walking, elevated walking track. And it's interesting that in the survey, I did, we didn't mine this out of there, but elevated walking tracks are typically one of the higher rated things you see in communities because it addresses everybody, it addresses the hot summertime. We haven't had the cold winter like we had last year, but the people's activity of walking is supported by that, and most centers today have that. Uh, the aerobics rooms, uh, uh, which is a room almost, almost like this, except this is a cushion floor. Uh, aerobics rooms and, and all the programming, this is for your martial arts, your Pilates, your yoga, your spinning, all those activities occur within those multi-program kind of zones. Uh, classrooms, uh, child care area, a lot of time that's a drop-in zone uh, for, for parents or grandparents that want to come and work out for an hour and a half and they can pay a small charge for that child to be watched, but it's not going to be a child care area, but it's really a babysitting zone. Uh, shared, shared areas, you would typically have a multi-purpose room in that that gives you some capacity there to be, be programmed out. Uh, indoor play area, we're seeing more and more of those done within centers where it's almost like a, uh, I hate to go back to the commercial side, but like a McDonald's or something, a scaled down version of the play element that's inside. A lot of people like to do that inside instead of going outside when it's 100 degrees. You take the kid there and play. Uh, uh, toilets, uh, family changing areas are, are huge, uh, especially when you've got aquatics. Uh, the aquatic uh, area would be a leisure fitness pool. Um, then you have your circulation and all that stuff. So it comes up to about 76 ounces for a feet. With what, a, what you would see as a chassis of a I call it a chassis, a chassis of a, of a recreation center today that you're seeing built in, in, across the Metroplex and, and uh, uh, one that actually when you build this, when you build this, and this is a big question for y'all, I'm not proposing that you do this, but typically when, when you build this, you're seeing people charge more competitive rates to what the cost of operations really is. What's that? Competitive with who? Uh, uh, well, you don't have to be competitive with the private. You, you actually typically are less in the private sector. It just depends on how much you want to how much you want to supplement the cost of operation. I'll give you an example. City of Keller, we had study for them. Said you need to charge this much money. You had this many people. I think that membership of like, our attendance is like two hundred and sixty-five thousand a year. Uh, to it's about just just about this center right here. Terms of components, uh, they their council elected that they wanted this to be self-sustaining. So in other words, they had to they had to they had to charge the rate to have a 100% recapture rate on on their fees and programming costs that they would have to to sustain it to sustain that. So not only the infrastructure itself, but the operating unit. Well, operation no, they, didn't, they didn't pay for the capital costs. They just right. paid for the operations costs. Okay. Operations, operations meaning staff, right. meaning uh, uh, meaning supplies, right. electricity, all of that. Okay. Uh, Frisco is taking that same approach. In fact, Frisco's right. rate is, is pretty high. Uh, Plano does not have that. Uh, Farmers Branch probably doesn't have that. Plano has double their has double their cost that they had when they started the facility. Yeah. The colony facility right there, and um, they have a water facility right there. Uh, that is a 
Like right right the Mama Beach or whatever that is? Yeah. That, that's a private enterprise. Yeah. And the ones that are doing that, that were, you know, we're out there. The cities that have elected to increase, like you talked about, mm -hmm. to try to help something that have they noticed any drop off in participation or anything? No. Uh, in fact, uh, there's a lot of surveys that are done, and, and typically what's happening is uh, you, you'll ask that question. You'll always, I mean, y'all are in the public service, you know that whatever you do, there's a few people that don't like what you do. Right. But by and large, uh, the surveys and even part of the surveys, you know, if we built a facility with the right amenities, would you be willing to pay, let the user pay for it, pretty much in terms of the operations? And, uh, you know, I mean, I, I could give you an example. I mean, when Plano built their new center, uh, we did it, so I know the numbers. They exceeded what they estimated they were going to get in the first three months of operation. Wildly successful. Keller, same way. Frisco, same way. So, uh, but in what they do, in what you also do is build some of that into your budget for scholarships. So you have people that perhaps can't participate without that scholarship help. So you, so you scholarship it. Now, I'm not arguing for you to do this. I'm just... I'm answering this question, uh, but uh, but that is that is a trend. I'm saying a trend in the industry uh, nationwide as well as here is for the user to pay a bigger part of that cost of operation than just kind of giving it away. Okay. Thank you. So we established some budgets for you. We said to to do this and when we when we do a budget, all the budget includes the, includes the construction, uh, furniture fixtures and equipment, plus F F and E, uh, the fees to do it and contingencies that you probably need. So that's that's kind of move in. There's, there's no other cost. That's that's the total cost. So construction is not that much because the total project cost. And that's what you should budget if you do something. So we uh, we developed these numbers uh, and these numbers are, are somewhat uh, global in a sense of the square foot and based on where the site is or, or the level of finish out, you know, those numbers will vary just a little bit, but it's a good tool for y'all to be considering uh, as you go forward relative to what you might want to do. Uh, I do have a, uh, I don't know if we, our time really allows us to do that, but I, I do have uh, kind of some slides on about eight or nine facilities in this area. Just kind of a quick run through. I call it kind of a perfect chart. If you're not familiar with it, if you're not familiar with what's being done around you, I'd be happy to do it, or we can just. No, let's do it real quick. We can kind of go through it quickly. Just kind of give us a quick look. While he's pulling that up, did uh, you all look at specific locations? I mean, east side is kind of a broad descriptor for location and I think that there had been some refinement of that uh, since, since we've been involved uh, uh, I would probably uh, ask either half or Bob to kind of share with you. We, we, we targeted, we targeted that one area and, uh, 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 that was potential. There was a land area was large enough and it had some <coughs> You know, you, you'd love for trails to come in, you'd love for this to be a part of kind of a, a larger system, if you will, because then you have all these things that play off each other. But without getting we, we too specific, obviously, yeah. but just kind of address uh, general location. I mean, we're not talking about way up by Castle Hills, correct? Well, the, the one area that was talked about where we have existing land based on some old master plans was a possibility out of East Hill Park. Yeah. But, but we've also talked about that might be too far that we need to look for centrally located, kind of central Louisville, some area. We didn't really identify any particular area. I'm going to take you through this just real quickly. 
Um, the city of Allen has has uh, two, two centers. Uh, this is one center that's most recently most recent, and they actually partnered with the school district. And it has indoor competitive waters, indoor leisure water. It has uh, the aerobics kind of activity. It has the uh, um, exercise zone itself. Uh, it's right adjacent to the high school and the new huge stadium they're building over there. Uh, this actually, we did a business plan on this, and this actually has been able to sustain about an 80 to 82% recapture rate year after year. And this facility is probably over 10 years old. Uh, Coppell, uh, one of your neighbors as well, Coppell has a center has a YMCA just down the street. Both do very well. Uh, Coppell it, it has the workout area, has an elevated track, gymnasium, uh, has, the, has a dedicated uh, aerobics area, child care. That's being expanded right now. And this is what they're doing to expand it. They're expanding to the front of the existing center, uh, creating a new lobby. This is kind of the floor plan. What they're doing is they found that their cardio area, and I do seminars on this topic, and I always say you can't move your that cardio weight area big enough because we're getting newer equipment, different kinds of equipment, more specific, targeted to different muscle areas and things like that. So that's basically what they did. They more than doubled the cardio area with the expansion that they're doing now. And this is going to be open. And in fact, the cardio zone is open, and the renovated area is going to be open. Grapevine. Uh, Grapevine is an older facility. Uh, has two gymnasiums. Gymnasium on either side of kind of the entry piece. Uh, the program areas actually are real, real good in Grapevine, and they're actually looking to redo what they're doing. What they're looking to add is an indoor pool. I like y'all have is a real high, like, deep rec indoor pool, and they're also moving their senior center as a component of that. They're moving their senior center as as a piece of that, they're going to do a study on it right now. Uh, you see it has, a, has the, this and, and the racquetball courts. Uh, racquetball courts are a really specialized zone, and uh, a lot of you guys are maybe racquetball players or women, but it, it unfortunately is kind of winning down because it, you have 800 square feet for two people or four people who can play doubles. That's a lot of square footage that you could be using and that's that capacity issue that you're looking at that cities are becoming more and more aware of what we do we need to entertain as many people within the city with that square footage. Uh, Keller, this is the one I said that's a hundred percent recapture rate. Uh, Keller has indoor and outdoor water. So this is has indoor and then the outdoor water out here. A large gymnasium a large cardio, about 7,000 square foot of cardio, a meeting area that could be used in the evening, could be blocked off, kind of what I was talking about uh, for your set, uh, for your other meeting room. Uh, has child care, has an elevated track going above it that's overlooked. Uh, it's in a, in a major park uh, along Bear Creek Park. Here are some of the images that you're, that you're getting. This is a meeting room. Other things are pretty self explanatory. But the track is a track typically is one of those things that walks around and sees everything. You know, here here it's overlooking the pool, or looks at gymnasium. Just a kind of a thread that because what you want to do, you want to see a lot of activity. You don't want a lot of things behind closed doors. You want to see what's going on and just for security as well as just that sense of it's really become the social area within the community that's done right. It becomes a real social area. Uh, McKinney. Kenny uh, has some dated facilities. Uh, they are in a major uh, push right now to do a new, new facility in McKinney. Uh, but they have, uh, this is a, a basically a, almost basketball and a meeting room space, two basketball courts. And this is a second center that has uh, weight and basketball. And they have a large meeting area that they ran out. It's a beautiful park setting that this facility is in. But they are in an expansion mode right now. Uh, probably the next two three months that they start that planning. Plano, this is the latest Plano facility that they did. Uh, this is Tom Muhlenbeck Center. Uh, 
uh, and basically has the double gymnasium, that's what I'm talking about, meeting room space, the pool area, and the, the, the school district is partnering in that. The school district actually uses this, but the city uses it to, uh, to uh, uh, for, their, uh, for their normal activities, they have an outdoor seasonal pool. Uh, but you can see what it's got, it's got an indoor the track that goes around this, it goes out to the lobby. Uh, in North Richardson Hills, this, this, I'm showing you this because it actually has a senior element as well. You see the senior elements here as the, as the classroom, it has the kind of what I call the living room, kind of lounge where people can go. It has a large meeting room that can get subdivided. Then it has access to this other large meeting room. It would be like a senior senior building attached to this building. They don't have it all the time, but when they've got the dances and all that stuff, they have that large area that they can use. So this is a banquet area of the center. And then this is all recreation, aquatics, uh, cardio, uh, gymnasium, and then upstairs is your aerobics room uh, and your long, long track. And they actually have kind of a terrace area upstairs. Just kind of give you some of the elements of that. This is opening in about two months. Um, but we're starting to see some of those little senior pieces crop into the program that the cities are doing in terms of uh, how they're going about things. Uh, Richardson, Richardson taking a different approach. All their things were kind of neighborhood oriented, so what Richardson is doing has a program of building about four or 25,000 perfect centers around the town. This is the first one at Hubline's a replacement facility, has a gymnasium, multi purpose zone, cardio area, and a game room. That's pretty much what they have. Uh, this is a new facility that they're planning on Arapahoe. It's a replacement for their own existing center. Again, the center is probably four years old or so. You know, they just have to replace it. So we need to we need to make better use of what we have. So we're building a new center, about 25,000 square feet. We're building an outdoor aquatic element as part of that in an existing park, Heights Park. I think that gives us a pretty good idea of some of the ones that, that are around. I would say that if you, if you, as you can see, this is a very good large undertaking here. We decide to go this direction. Yes. If we do, I would recommend that we plan a a council uh, uh, trip, yeah. similar to what we did when we built City Hall and stuff, that we actually go and uh, visit some of these facilities and see firsthand exactly what they're doing, get some personal on-site direction of what we would like to see, what we wouldn't like, what we prefer to focus on. Yeah, what we prefer to focus on we kind of go in that direction. I will add, there is one thing that you can take another approach that is somewhat unconventional with more and more people are doing. It is actually looking at what's going to cost you to operate it, right. what your potential income is, and doing a business, kind of plan. doing a business plan as part of that. Right. Uh, so you know, going into it, you know you're agreeing to support it X number of dollars, or not at all, or more than that. Right. And so that's a, so anyway, that's a, that's really the end of my discussion. And I'm here for question and answer. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you, Dwayne. You know, um, we should mention and actually commend the city for this facility that we are in. It's truly a beautiful facility, and I think it's a good example of a partnership in this case with the hospital, but also about just the quantity of it. I mean, this is state of the art, and. Um, but I really think you set yourself apart within the North Texas area by something like this. And so make that your goal, make that your vision. Um, I can really um, uh, um, 